Okay, we're going to get started in just a moment. I think we are. Good evening, and welcome to the February 22nd, 2016 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chairman, could you please call the roll? Mr. Bealey? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Wood? Here. Ms. Auglis? And Ms. Saunders? Thank you. Just for the record, uh, in the absence of Ms. Auglis, Mr. Bealey will be a voting member this evening. And I understand that Ms. Saunders will be here shortly. But we do have a quorum for getting the meeting started. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the February 1st, 2016 meeting. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Quick housekeeping note. Uh, item number five, Ballantine Development, has been tabled at the request of the applicant. The next item, number four, the Planning Board will conduct a public hearing to receive input regarding proposed amendments to Chapter 405, the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance, to allow non-conforming structures to be elevated to meet floodplain requirements. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's an item that actually our, our Zoning Administrator working with the Board of Appeals has identified and, and brought forth. Um, essentially, there currently exists a conflict between our Zoning Ordinance and our floodplain uh, management ordinance. Um, and particularly where the two mostly coincide sort of in our coastal areas. Um, essentially, our, our zoning ordinance um, states that non-conforming buildings are not allowed to be expanded, enlarged, or in this instance, increased in height unless they receive a variance from the Board of Appeals, while at the same time, our floodplain management ordinance actually requires structures to be elevated at least one foot above uh, base flood elevation if the building is being invested in up to or over 50% of the value of the structure. So really what this is talking about is if someone wants to do interior improvements to their structure, a non-conforming structure that exceeds 50% of the value, we have one ordinance that says that structure must go up a foot or at least one foot above base flood elevation, whatever that height is. In other words, it says, well, you can't do that without going through our Board of Appeals. The zoning ordinance to get a, in a, uh, a variance has sort of a high standard, a high threshold to get that. So there's this, this duality going on um, that our Board of Appeals has had to deal with. So essentially the amendment it, um, aims to address and eliminate that conflict um, by expressly allowing non-conforming buildings to be elevated to meet the floodplain standards um, without having to go through the Board of Appeals process. I will n note that this is really all about sort of those interior, stru interior structural changes I talked about. If someone's looking to do exterior additions, expand the building in any way, that would still trigger that Board of Appeals review process. Um, and so that's what the language is uh, primarily about. Thanks, Jay. <coughs> uh, this is a public hearing. So at this time, I'll open the public hearing. If anyone would like to come up and say anything about this, uh, just introduce yourself, give your address, and limit your comments to five minutes, please. I'll open the hearing. We have any takers? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And we'll turn to board discussion. Uh, Mike, would you like to start off? I have nothing to add. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, thank you for uh, cleaning up that uh, discrepancy and conflict. Thanks. I'm in favor of it. Nick, anything? Nothing to add. Ron? Good. All right. Roger? All right. OK, great. Well, we're off to a running start. Uh, nothing here either. This is pretty straightforward. It's good cleanup. As staff's memo noted, uh, this was something that came up as part of a process that the Long Range Com a Planning Committee recently went through, focused on Higgins Beach, but it applies to some other areas as well. And um, I think it's just a good common sense revision. So thanks, Jay. OK. Uh, and I'll just touch on the, the next step in the process is it will go back to our town council for their public hearing and second reading on the item. Um, so folks do have additional opportunities to speak and say. And just wish. for the record, the board is clearly sending forward a positive 
sentiment on this. Thanks. As I mentioned before, item number five was tabled. Uh, item number six, M&R Holdings LLC requests site plan amendment review for 6 Washington Avenue, assessor's map R62, lot 24. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see, the applicant is before the board to seek an ex expansion of the parking field for a previously developed site uh, within the industrial district at 6 Washington Avenue. Um, as board members will note, this item was before you, I think it was back in December as a sketch plan. Um, the site is actually also encumbered by some shoreland zoning overlay district. And so there was some discussion uh, that we had around um, that, particularly given that um, when, when the site was originally approved, that shoreland overlay area was actually in resource protection. So there's a 1987, I believe, subdivision plan that has a DEP condition approval note on it that states there should be no disturbance of that area. Well, our local ordinance, as I just referenced, has changed in the years. And I'm not sure when that change occurred. It's been at least probably eight years, if not many more than that at this time. Um, so the, the proposed expansion is permitted within the local ordinances. So there's just a question about the DEP um, condition, in which I know the applicant has had begun to have some discussions with the DEP, and I'm sure we'll um, provide the board with a bit more on that as they are able. Um, let's see, you received staff comments as well as comments from Woodard and Kern, our peer review engineers. Um, Woodard and Kern, I think, was generally comfortable with the direction of the stormwater approach on this. Um, There's a few details regarding uh, restoration and stabilization of the site uh, to be addressed as this moves forward, but um, those are items that we think could be dealt with as a condition of approval if the board were so inclined. Um, staff comments also touched on issues in terms of lighting. Um, uh, we ha did have a question, I think it might have come up also at sketch plan about two of the uh, proposed parking spaces, um, as well as uh, um, some standard notes. One item that staff didn't address in our comments um, is detailing in terms of there's a dumpster pad. Um, site plan ordinance typically seeks to have, seeks to have dumpster pads enclosed. Um, and at this time, the applicant is um, not proposing any enclosures, and so I'm sure they will talk to you about that as well. Um, with that, I will turn it back to you. I will note that we have, depending on the board's uh, discussion tonight, we have drafted a motion for board consideration with some conditions and or waivers depending on uh, uh, the board's determination on the item. So with that, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn over to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair with St. Clair Associates. Uh, the last time we were here before you folks uh, was back in early December. At the time, we presented a sketch plan for proposed parking improvements for a piece of property owned by M&R Holdings, LLC. It's a site in the industrial park. There's an existing building on the property now. We're not proposing any expansions to the building, just an improvement in the layout in order to accommodate some additional parking. Uh, as you can see on the plan, the existing building has frontage along Washington Avenue. The rear, uh, the property is actually kind of deep. Uh, the rear of the building has uh, in the lighter gray, you can see on the colored rendering here, the parking and maneuvering area to the rear of the building. There are docks along the rear side of the building. There are some at grade docks. There are also uh, some um, full height docks uh, for trailer trucks. What we're proposing to do uh, is to provide some additional parking along the rear of the site. As Jay mentioned, the back of the property is subject to shoreland zoning. It's within 250 feet of Moses Creek. That blue dashed line that you see on the rendering is that 250 foot mark. The uh, item that we talked to you about back in early December was with regard to a condition of our project site location permit, permit which was issued back in the 80s. <coughs> and that, uh, there was a line on a divided plan, because this is actually one of two lots uh, that was divided out in the mid-80s. On that plan, that line at 250 is referenced that there's a note on there that nothing can happen beyond that. And it is believed, based on our discussions with code enforcement early on in the process, as well as our initial conversation with DEP, 
which I believe you probably remember we talked about at the last planning board meeting, that that line actually predated Shoreland Zoning, the mandatory Shoreland Zoning Act. And so the Shoreland Zoning Act kind of took that over uh, in that process. So as Jay mentioned, we are consistent with the current zoning, uh, which is Shoreland Zoning, but we do need to uh, do a minor revision to the uh, site location permit for the project in order to remove that condition of approval. That application was filed in mid-December, on December 16th. We have not, as of today, uh, still heard back on that application request. Um, we have talked to the project analyst a few times about it, uh, but we don't have anything more uh, to give you as an update at this point. And that is unfortunate, uh, but unfortunately that is where we are. But we'd like to proceed uh, with the local review, recognizing that we are consistent with the shoreland zoning and that uh, when our first meeting with the DEP, this is characterized as a minor uh, change and something that has happened actually on other projects that have predated the mandatory shoreland zoning act. So uh, with that, we'd like to, to proceed and move forward with the local review and understand certainly that anything uh, that would move forward would be conditioned on receipt of that revision approval from the DEP uh, before we could do anything construction-wise uh, on the site. So as Jay mentioned, there were a few items uh, that were uh, identified as part of the site plan review comments at the staff level and peer review level, one of which were, were the two parking spaces which are located <coughs> in this area here. There are actually two parking spaces there now. The um, plan shows them just a little bit angled a little bit differently. What we are proposing to do uh, in recognition of the fact that there were staff comments about whether we could eliminate those. We had considered it. We had um, taken a look at it. Uh, honestly, the 50 spaces are exactly what we need to have um, for the plan, so loss of those two spaces uh, would not be an option. But we, what we would like to do is to note that they would be employee parking so that there wouldn't be, uh, there's a couple of employees that we expect would be there quite early in the day and that they would be there and it wouldn't be a high turnover type area um, for that. So we would designate those as employee parking spaces but we would respectfully request that we be able to keep them. <coughs> uh, <coughs> one of the other comments that was raised was with regard to lighting. We have uh, in our initial comments that we received from staff at the sketch plan review, we were asked to give consideration to uh, the building mounted lighting to uh, look at upgrading any of the fixtures. What we are proposing to do is to upgrade the building mounted fixtures that are on the front and the sides of the building so that those would be new fixtures. On the rear, and Jay's just pulling up that picture, uh, I sent Jay a picture of the rear of the building and a zoomed in shot of the three fixtures that we would like to keep at the rear of the building. Those are, as you can see on the back side, they are facing a wooded area. We are in an industrial district. And with uh, the ability to keep those three fixtures, we avoid the need to have to uh, put out any pole mounted lighting to light the rear uh, parking areas of the site. So we would like to be able to maintain those. Um, as you can see on the, on the detail, it does have a bit of a shield on the top. Um, but that was what we would propose to do for those three fixtures. As I said, the other remaining fixtures on the buildings would be updated uh, for that. Um, <coughs> as Jay mentioned also, we are respectfully asking that the board give consideration to uh, the elimination of any dumpster enclosure. We do have a dumpster pad area. Located right in that area. Um, in talking to uh, the applicant, what we'd like to do is actually, um, the plan shows it as 20 by 30. We'd like to actually make it 24 by 30, just to give a little bit more room uh, for the dumpsters themselves. And we are respectfully requesting that those not be enclosed, given the setting and given their location at the rear of the site, uh, surrounded by a wooded area. So uh, we'd like to not uh, have those fenced in. The um, uh, comments that we received from Woodard and Kern as part of the peer review, uh, as Jay mentioned, there was some detailed information that they'd like us to provide for them to talk a little bit about the treatment at the outlet. <coughs> yeah. 
there is an existing <coughs> piped outlet that discharges into Moses Creek. It was built in the 80s when the original building was built. And it picks up runoff from the rooftop and the, the uh, rear loading area, and it discharges out to the creek. Um, we are proposing to stabilize that outlet. It needs some repair work in order to um, make sure that we're not getting any sedimentation down into the creek. So uh, as part of our plan, we called that out that we were going to provide a rip-wrapped outlet uh, in that location. And uh, as part of Dave Sinus's comments, he asked for a little bit further uh, information on that, which we'll, we'll certainly work with him to provide for that. Um, with that, I think we'll turn it back to you folks if you have any questions or comments. Thank you. Um, we do have the opportunity for a public comment on this before the board discusses it. If anyone is interested, come on up. All right, seeing none, we'll turn to board discussion then. And then I just ask folks, um, since we have a couple of waiver requests here, that in the course of your comments, you could just indicate kind of where you where you uh, are on that, and you can you have the ability to change your mind later if you want. But it'd just be helpful to get a sense of where people are on those. Um, Robin, would you like to start off? Okay. Um, so specifically regarding um, any restrictive deed and covenants, I'm also wondering, Nancy, if this will include any covenants or conservation easement for the wooded buffer that's, that's uh, being proposed? That was one of the comments that Dave Sinus had raised in his uh, comments as well. The wooded buffer that you see proposed on the site uh, will be part of a, uh, there's D language that restricts that area okay. uh, as part of it, and that is consistent with the DEP's criteria for that. And could you just point to sort of where it, where it starts there, Nancy? Is it all the green? Yes. Um, this area right here, mm -hmm. that is the stone zone level of spreader, mm -hmm. and the area down Um, speaking of the level lip spreader, um, in looking at the um, maintenance inspection laws provided, um, I saw the wooded buffer, but I didn't see the level lip spreader for long-term maintenance. But I could be looking right over it, Nancy. Um, I thought it was in with the outlet. I think it's included in the culvert outlet. On the details? Uh, in the notes for that, um, the checklist in the uh, maintenance plan. I don't see it included in our Yeah, plan. I included it in culverts and pipe inlets and outlets. Culverts, inlets and outlets. It's on the inspection and maintenance log. It is the third line down. Yep, yep, I got it here. Mine just says culverts and pipe inlets. Um, um, I don't see level lip spreader called out, but you know, I, I would assume that it would mean you know looking for no preferential pathways, like no railing and go, you know gullying Correct. and things like that. Correct. Okay. Um, so. Where I'm coming from, I guess, Nancy, too, is um, understanding that the town of Scarborough is an MS4 um, mm -hmm. community, and with that, there are certain, you know, sort of cautionary, you know, sort of roles that the, the town has to take with respect to receiving oncoming or incoming um, drainage to, to their MS4 ditch lines and things like that. So. I'm wondering, um, one of the requirements of the MS4 permit is to do long-term post-construction inspection like you, you have going on here. But I'm wondering if you have any insight as to who might be doing the inspections for the landowner, if it will be you or it will be the landowner themselves. There are some projects that we do have uh, for the landowner that we do the inspections. They also are obviously have some very clear connections with folks who are well versed in the um, erosion and sediment control measures being certified as um, erosion and sediment control contractors. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are other options for that, but um, we had specified in there that there is a requirement that there be a person designated moving forward uh, with that. Okay. Um, and I guess 
one other sort of, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, I guess, uh, as far as the inspection log is concerned, if, um, uh, um, I'll table that for now. Um, how, how do you plan to address Dave Sienis' questions regarding the getting to the erosion um, at the outfall without, you know, sort of matting down the earth and those types of things? The outfall is just, um, when, they, when they originally installed the line, mm -hmm. you can't really see it from, from the plans of the aerial photography, but this line comes from here, mm -hmm. and it's pretty flat and pretty uh, <laughs> navigable right now uh, to get to that outlet. It's just it drops off over the edge, and I really believe that as part of the improvements that it can be done sort of over the edge, if you will, without getting down into the more sensitive areas. If you look at where that outlet is mm -hmm. on this colored rendering, you'll see that the areas that were identified as wetlands are quite a distance away from that outlet. Okay. And so I'm confident that we can do the stabilization that we'd like to do right at the pipe outlet. And then if there's any areas that are down beyond that uh, to look. How will you get there, though? It's, it's flat. It's okay. flat out to this area here. Okay. Because we can drive Okay. And then out in this area here, it drops off outside of the immediate outlet. If there's anything that exhibits any um, further erosion, the uh, installation of turf reinforcement mat, I think, would be a good solution down going over the edge there. So are you proposing any special measures then to address what Dave said about recommending ground pressure, lo small or low, you know, impact ground pressure equipment? I believe Dave's comments were really more focused if we had to get out into the wetlands, and we're further up above those wetlands, we're sort of on the side of the bank. So that was my interpretation of his comments. What's, uh, what's your that. schedule for construction? I'd like to start early in the spring. Okay. So maybe the ground won't be frozen. So it'll probably, and if we're in a shoreland zone area, it could be kind of monkey. That particular area where we're, we're looking, I don't expect it's going to be uh, monkey. If we were <coughs> further down on the slope, it would be, you know, something that we'd be concerned about. Okay. Um, but you plan to fully address Dave Sienis was coming there. Yep. Okay. Um, so you said the timeline for the work is spring. Um, who do we? Who do you anticipate the the contractor being? Rizbera Brothers. Rizbera. Okay. And so they'll be responsible for doing the erosion and sedimentation control. Um, at what point? Um, well. One of the things Dave Sienis also asked for was the location of the stabilized construction entrance. So have you all identified that? Well, that was one of the things I wanted to talk to Dave about. Um, because this is an existing paved site, mm -hmm. to actually do a stabilized construction entrance really doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense. I mean, the construction entrances are based on, you know, if you're in an area where you're potentially mucking up an existing road, then you would have those. But we have quite a distance within the site that's already paved mm -hmm. before we would be doing anything uh, to potentially impact uh, Washington Avenue. So we had shown saw cut locations for where we're going to tie into the edge of pavement, uh, but we hadn't proposed to do anything for a stabilized construction entrance because there was a significant area within the site that's already paved. Um, so if we're still going to be mucking, so in the back back 40, will there be like a proposed sweeping plan or something? So before you, construction leaves the site, if you're going to use the existing impervious area for to basically collect all the sediment that comes off construction vehicles and the like, it would seem to me that if you're going to use that place to collect the sediment or to have the sediment drop before you get out on the road, that you would need to sweep that then before the construction is done. So has that been considered? Well, in the general erosion and sediment control plan, there are provisions for making sure that we don't get any dust or sediment onto the street itself. That's part of the program. And I typically leave that to the contractor, especially in a situation like this where it's so limited that they would be able to maintain their site on a daily basis. Okay. So 
no stabilized construction entrance and no sweeping program. Well, there is a sweeping program. It's in the ENF. Okay. Um, where is the location of the grubbing stockpile going to be? I noticed that you, in in here you talked about um, uh, doing some grubbing and maybe some beneficial reuse of the grubbing materials to potentially use as um, erosion control mix in the um, to according to the DEP standards. So, just wondering where the grubbing stockpile will be. I would anticipate that that would be happening in about the next one of years or so where we're proposing the dumpster pad. As I mentioned, it's kind of open and flat in that area. Okay. Um, so that would be a good logical point so we can, you know, work within the confines of the, the new paved area, mm -hmm. but we're not too far out off the edge as well. Okay. Um, it talked a little bit about um, dewatering. You may need to encounter some dewatering during construction. Um, uh, what is, you know, and I, I think it said you were going to use a dirt bag or something like that. Um, would it be possible for, you, for the contractor to let staff know when, when dewatering <coughs> happens kind of a thing? Because we have, I think we have, um, I'm just thinking MS4 process here because, you know, as far as the MS4 is concerned, dewatering is, is you know, an illicit discharge. Mm -hmm. Construction entrance is also could potentially be an illicit discharge, and the, the dumpster without an enclosure could also be a potential illicit discharge. Um, I'm wondering also, did you did you get a chance to provide Dave Cenas or or a staff with the existing conditions plan that was requested? We can provide a separate. It's on the plan itself, but it's kind of hard to see because we're sort of just expanding on the perimeter. Okay. You can see from the color up here. Yep. The existing condition is the lighter gray mm -hmm. on the edge of pavement, so that's already there on the site. Oh, the building, I obviously, we're not changing, uh -huh. uh, so it's the additional uh, pavement at the rear corner okay. and the drive lane along the side. We can certainly separate those two drawings if you okay. would like. Um, so there was also a question about how long the level lip spreader should be, 50 feet or 30 feet. Was that clarified? That was my mistake. Okay. <laughs> uh, it needs to be 30 feet. Uh, okay. It is, and that was my mistake that I had typed it in at 50. Okay. The calculations demonstrated at 30. Okay. And where will snow storage be? Uh, we had provided for snow storage on the back side of the site in the parking areas, I believe, and I don't remember off the top of my head uh, where that might be. How can we avoid it? For, I mean, do you, do you feel like it would be in front of the level lip spreader, and do you see that being problematic? No, I've already talked to the applicant about that. Okay, that so it can't be in the level lip spreader, so it's basically okay. we're talking about. Okay. That's all I have for now. Okay. Roger? <laughs> Thanks, Robin. <laughs> Are we on the same? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, um, I, I actually um, don't have too many questions. The only, the only comments I would make is um, regarding the dumpster and the enclosure of it, personally I don't think that's a big issue because of the, um, where the site is and you know, where it's going to be located. It's an industrial park, so I don't think that's really, from my point of view, a necessary requirement. And regarding the parking of those two, uh, those two spaces, uh, I think you explained why you need those. Um, I would think if it becomes a safety issue, the uh, owner of the property or whoever's operating the business would realize that and mm -hmm. take, take some um, considerations uh, as to that. So I don't, I'm not too concerned about that either. And, um, otherwise, uh, I think most of um, your other concerns have been addressed. Uh, the con concerns have been addressed, so I, I don't have anything else really. Okay, thanks, Roger. Ron? Yeah, I have a few things. Uh, my esteemed colleague down the other end certainly did the MS4 <laughs> in great depth, so I don't have to uh, go into that at all. But I have a question for the chair. Uh, in in the past. Uh, this board is not given final approval without final DEP approval. And it seems to me that they're still working out there. DEP's okay. 
Am I wrong? I think what's different, and staff can certainly jump in to help articulate this if better if I if I don't. But I, my understanding is that the difference in this case is that um, there is some local authority, and um, just given the the circumstances and and the the sequence involved, that it's kind of a different situation. But Jay, maybe you could sure lay that out a little bit better in terms of the how this is different from the precedent we've had in the past. Yep, I think there's there are a couple things going on. Typically, what the board seeks is certainly before if there's an application um, <coughs> that's a new site, a green site, it hasn't been developed before, and there's a new permit to be issued by the DEP or DOT. The board typically waits to have those in hand before doing any approval. If there's an amendment to an existing permit. The board will would like to typically see that amended permit in hand, but depending on the um, the uh, uh, scope of the project, sometimes the board will uh, provide a condition of approval that a an amended permit be provided to staff prior to the start of construction. In this case, it's not actually a permit per se that we're talking about. Typically what we're looking at is a stormwater permit or a site location permit. Here what we have is a DEP condition of approval um, and that note on the plan talks about, um, and I can pull it up if, if the board likes, but generally it says uh, there's to be no, no disturbance of the area um, that's behind the, I think it's called the buffer zone on the original plan. And that really is the extent of that resource protection line, as was already talked about. So in this case, our local ordinance will essentially, on this property, there's a deed covenant. There's someone holding a deed restriction, the DEP, uh, saying that you can't do this work. However, our local ordinance allows for it. There's, in my um, experiences and discussions, there's sort of two lines of case law when it comes to deed restrictions on a property and the board's responsibility and role in that. Um, and I think depending on which attorney or who the attorney is working for, you could sort of, <laughs> it, it, I think it, until it gets before a judge, it's really hard to know which one will really truly be prevailing. But uh, so so staff's interpretation in this instance is that this is a condition. This is a a private um, covenant on the property. Yes, the DEP is the holder, but it's still they're still a private party. They're not. Our local ordinances would allow this, barring this discussion of that condition of approval. So staff would be comfortable if the board's comfortable. We believe that you know the, the board would have standing to provide a condition of approval um, that. If, if you're so inclined um, that the applicant work through that, you know, eliminating that uh, deed covenants prior to starting work, um, you know, if the board's so inclined, uh, um, you know, to to want to wait till that be resolved, I think the board there's there's a track of case law that would say the board can do that as well. Um, so I sort of laid that at your feet, but um, as I said, step. Um, it's prepared to support the board in either way you go with it. That's helpful. Thanks. I, I, I don't mind. I just want it in the draft motion. I mean, I don't want it just to slip by. I mean, in playing devil's advocate, if all of a sudden the DEP says no, for whatever reason, you know, and mm -hmm. then it gets into a court thing and so forth and so on, uh, which I don't anticipate, but I'd still like it as, as a condition on, on, on the draft motion. Um, I, I'm also okay with the dumpster and not being enclosed because of the location. Um, and I also go along with the parking space situation. Um, going back one step in when the work is done, um, one of the recommendations of Wooden Common, and that might have been covered, and I'm just going to reinforce it, is that uh, small, low ground pressure, I mean, the, the least disruption, I guess, I'll put it in simple terms, as is humanly possible in getting the job done. Uh, I think that is important, uh, and, and even within the location that it, that it's, uh, that occurs. So I want to stress that also, that uh, uh, reinforce what Wooden and Curran had said on that. Um, 
you on that. Um, I think I'm okay because the other issues were well covered uh, by my colleague. So I'm all done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Nick? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm okay with their waiver requests. I would, the, the lighting, is this, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen the full lighting plan. Is this what they're asking for the exemption for because it abuts woods and, um, you know, the cutoffs, basically? Yeah. I guess my only thought on that would be if somebody complained that they'd be willing to put in cutoff lighting. <coughs> I can reserve that right, but just have it in there. Almost the same thing with the dumpster. If we start to see debris floating down the river, um, <laughs> we reserve the right to uh, ask them to put something in the back of it to catch anything from blowing out that way. But that would be my only two comments on those. But other than that, I'm okay. okay. As a point of order, uh, picking up on that last comment uh, for staff, when the board grants a waiver and it turns out to be some sort of, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, an enforcement issue. Is that something that is just implicit in in the approval, or, or something that would have to be clearly stated? I mean, it would seem to me that any time there are any sort of nuisance complaints, that the town would have the ability to. Not if the board. The board has the ability to waive the site plan review standards. I think if the board grants that waiver, then you're essentially saying, okay, the applicants demonstrated evidence that they're meeting our standards and we're comfortable with the proposal. The town doesn't really have the ability to go back to someone to say, well, yeah, we, I know the board allow you to have these lighting fixtures, but really you need to now have cutoff fixtures because your neighbor complained. If the board has a concern, you could ask the applicant to provide a full photometric plan if you want to see more detail. Um, but no, I, that's, it's really not an area that the town, that we can get into. I think that would be an overstep, I believe. I think the appropriate language though could remedy that. I mean, not necessarily grant a, a waiver, but as a condition that they would agree, the applicant would agree to change it, if it were a nuisance down the road. Um, that's just a thought. I think language can solve some of those problems. Okay. Robin? Um, so I just was wondering, our options are, are um, to grant a waiver as is with no cutoff lighting in the back or to disprove or, or disapprove of, of, of it as is. I'm wondering are there other options because to me coming from the perspective that I have is that lighting isn't necessarily um, just for neighbors. It's also for habitat and it's also a cumulative effect in the town as far as you know the glow living over on you know Pleasant Hill we can see the glow of Oak Hill, our Oak Hill neighbors. Um, so it seems like redevelopment would be the time to to get the, the lighting up to the standard. So I'm just as a new as a new board, you know, planning board member. I'm just trying to understand what the options are: mm -hmm. approve as is, or well, what? I think the options are that we uh, we would either grant waivers one. Mm -hmm. the other or both, and that to the extent we did not grant a waiver on a certain item, that item we could list as a condition. Um, if you take a look at the draft uh, mm -hmm. motion that's in front of us, C and D are both, that's a draft language um, that, would we, that we would use if we were not granting one or both of those waivers. <coughs> Uh, can so I have a question? Uh, just in light of that, would you repeat why? Again, I know you did, but it went right by me. Why you don't want to go with the full cutoff fixtures? We are proposing to retain the three existing fixtures on the rear of the building in order to avoid having to place pole mounted lighting to provide lighting on the outside edge of the parking area. So those three fixtures would be sufficient to shield light from the building to eliminate those rear parking areas. If we put those onto the newer fixtures, which are proposed around the sides and the front of the building, then what will happen is we'll have to put pole mounted fixtures out there to provide the illumination necessary for the parking area back there. 
so what we would like to do is we'll upgrade around three sides of the building, but those three fixtures which you see the photo of, we'd like to keep on the back of the building and then not put any additional lighting out back off the edge of pavement. Okay. Thanks. I'm pretty wishy washy about that. Like I said, I don't really have a problem with it. I would I was just hoping to reserve a right somewhere down the line that <coughs> if there was ever a complaint about it, then so if it's a waiver, it's a waiver, I'd go along with the waiver. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Mike? Mm. Uh, <coughs> generally speaking, I don't have any problems with the proposal. Uh, as far as the light fixtures go, um, I, I appreciate the, um, the interest in not having to construct full lighting. Um, my interest would be if they're uh, looking at the only thing I really have to go on is the neighbors, the abutting properties, and if that would impact their property line, spill over at all. And I don't have a photometric. We don't have one, right? We provided some information on the lighting. It was for the new lighting around the front side. I don't believe there's anything new uh, along the, the back. It looks. It looks fairly wooded, not only in the back, but also along the sides. On what would be the um, southerly side of the site is all wooded. Um, obviously, the easterly side is wooded off the edge of pavement. And on the northerly side, there is some woods, but there is a parking area uh, adjacent to this uh, area right here. And would the lighting be 24-7? No. So it would uh, cut off? Correct. We could put it on a timer so that it would be off um, after 8 o'clock at night. So no security issues or concerns in that regard? Or? Basically, we wanted to be able to, if there was, a, there, there was a meeting held in the evening hours, that there would be light. You know, you're talking about wintertime conditions when you've got, it gets dark at 5 o'clock. So mm -hmm. um, just the ability to have that while folks are still there in the building. Right. Well, with that, with that additional uh, testimony, if you will, I would be in support of waiving the uh, full cutoff in the back. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the dumpster goes, it's kind of like along the same lines. We, you know, a lot, myself uh, in particular, I think about enclosing dumpsters because they, they add to the aesthetics of a particular site. But my colleague brought up a, a point that I hadn't considered is about uh, it also contains any kind of uh, debris that might escape the container you know, from, uh, from finding itself either throughout the property or, or um, maybe all the way to Moses Creek. I don't know. Is there any feedback you can give me on, on why we shouldn't have an enclosure for that reason? I don't You want to? <laughs> Good evening, Rocky Risbera. Um, the biggest part of not wanting to enclose those dumpsters for me is is our use. So we're going to have room there for about three thirty yard roll offs, and those roll offs are used. We come back to the shop, our trucks come back to the shops and shop, and they'll have uh, things that need to go into the dumpster, and so we'll back it beside the dumpster and by hand take it out of a van and throw it into the dumpster. So we're access to those dumpsters and being able to juggle those dumpsters around. As one gets full, they come in, pull, you know, drop a clean one, pull that one out. So the access is more important uh, than, than anything for us. Um, as far as keeping it, you know, from blowing into the, into the wood line and whatnot, I mean, that's something that, you know, we have to maintain. Uh, I think a lot of you are familiar with our site right now, uh, and our intention is to move that company down here so the dumpster that's that's on Route 1 in front of the Town and Country Center building will be gone. Um, but that's, that's something we constantly have to maintain and, you know, occasionally it gets blown over. This is actually a much better situation than we have now because we'll have, we'll have more than one dumpster and so we shouldn't get to the point where it's full or over full because we're waiting for a, for a dump the next day. So to me it's more of a maintenance and it's up to us to keep it, keep it clean. And obviously if it, if it did end up being a um an issue per se, that would be, I would imagine, a violation of, of one or more of our codes where additional uh, discussion and uh, remedies might be brought up at that time. So for that, for that purpose, I too would be in favor of uh, uh, granting the waiver for the, for the enclosure around the dumpster. Thank you. 
Um, as far as the uh, two spaces uh, um, go, uh, I appreciate you labeling them employee parking only. Is there any reason to literally put a sign up for that purpose? Uh, you're not going to have. That'll be Bill and Ron. <laughs> okay. They're 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 at six o'clock in the morning. The sign says parking for Bill and Ron only. Yeah. <laughs> It'll but work. It, it, it's not. This this isn't a retail type of thing. We're not we're not having people that drive by and pull in and. Find a spot. No, we we'll, we have people come to the office, you know, daily, occasionally, and we have a lot of uh, late afternoon or, or night meetings where there might be a meeting at four or five o'clock at night, last an hour, hour and a half. So we do have some people coming, and that's we primarily see the parking in the front of the building mm -hmm. used for that. Employees will park, you know, off the sides or off uh, out back, sneaking those two extras in that you know they're there now. It's just we're reconfiguring the the angle. It just made sense for us to try to keep those because we can put two employees there and it just it works. Okay. Uh, as far as the uh, DEP condition of approval, would if the board was to elect to use this draft motion um, and offer the waivers, either as written or a variation thereof, would would the uh, would we consider adding an additional condition that speaks of? Waiting for uh, approval of the DEP um, amendment of the conditions. Uh. Yes, and actually, this is something I had a little sidebar with Jay earlier. Um, item number two under the conditions actually does address that. It and does. Okay. I propose that we just insert from the DEP after the word evidence in the first line so that it's clear that that pertains that's to that. That's what I wanted, yeah. That's okay. what I wanted. All right. right. Well, with that, Mr. Chairman, then uh, I'm in favor of. Uh, of the draft motion with um, uh, and, and the waiver on the dumpster enclosures and also the uh, full cutoffs in the back and um, also agree with uh, your suggestion that we insert DEP in item number two. Thank you. Thanks. Robin, did you have something else? Yeah, um, just a couple things. I just want to ask about the, um, the pr new proposed use and I know Rocky you were talking about it being your offices and things but um, Having 200 yard roll off, that doesn't seem like regular office buildings. Can you just talk 30 about 30 yard roll offs? Say it again? 30 yard roll offs. Oh, 30 yard roll offs. I thought you said big, long, no. 200. Uh -oh. Okay, good. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, and then I'm also wondering, too, if um, is, are, the, are the back loading docks going to be used at all? They will. Yeah. Occasionally. Okay, and, and so what type of materials are we talking about coming in and out? I'm just thinking of the catch basin. That's right there. Will it be liquid at all? We're not moving our construction company there. No, 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 no. But, okay. But what's so coming in the I thought you were worried about dump trucks and, and nope. whatnot. Nope. So it's, they're not, you know, the loading dock won't be used a lot. I mean, occasionally some wood materials, okay. box materials. Paper goods, consumer goods. Paper goods, goods those kinds of things. No bulk materials or anything like no. that. Okay. And then uh, last is the deed and covenants for the forested buffer separate from the deed covenants that's being referred to in number two. That is correct. The, d the wooded buffer will be a new covenant that will be put on associated with the proposed buffer. Right. The covenants that are being discussed, uh, I haven't seen the, the suggested motion, but those covenants that have been discussed are with regard to uh, the existing permits that were issued. Right. Okay. So there is a separate covenant that should be forthcoming too, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add that hasn't been covered already. Um, I'm pretty happy with where we are at this point. Um, in terms of the, the lighting, I appreciate uh, Robin's comment about the cumulative effect of lighting, and I, I think that's a good thing for us to always be mindful of. Uh, it's not always just who the immediate neighbor might be. Um, but I think given the clarification that we got around the hours of the lighting mm -hmm. and um, the fact that um, if they were to go to a full cutoff, they would intend to add two pole mounted lights um, that would at least partially offset that benefit. So um, I think given all that, I'm comfortable granting that waiver and, and likewise um, on the dumpsters given the additional information and context that we have. Uh, and then uh, similarly, I'm okay on the parking given the, the limitation to employee use. Um, so, without belaboring it any further, I will put a motion forward. 
I move to approve the application of M&R Holdings, LLC for proposed site plan amendments to 6 Washington Avenue with the following conditions. Number one, prior to the start of construction, the plan shall be revised to address comments in Woodard and Curran's memo dated January 25th, 2016. Number two, prior to the start of construction, the applicant shall provide evidence from the DEP to the planning department that any restrictive deed covenants as depicted on the plans recorded at the Registry of Deeds, Book 170, page 6, have been legally extinguished. A plan note documenting the modification is to be added to the site, site plan sheet. Number three, prior to the start of construction, the plan shall be revised to address items related to A, revise the plan to include the town's standard site plan notes and to identify the amount of coverage in the shoreland zone overlay, <coughs> and B, modify the parking layout to eliminate the two spaces at the northwesterly corner. Move that we grant the following waivers. Based on the site characteristics, plan details, and zoning context, the board waives the requirement for a dumpster enclosure and utilization of full cutoff light fixtures on the rear of the building and uh, revised plans and documentation are to be reviewed and approved by planning staff. That's the motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a discussion. Going back to what Robin said, there are two separate <coughs> issues as far as covenants and deeds that I think need to be languaged out. I think the other one is, is uh, integral to the, to the plan itself, right? I mean, right. it's not a separate, um, it's not a separate kind of outstanding it's part of the materials item. that they submitted um, and so it becomes it's part of their documentation part of their presentation so it, it's a it's a it's a require it's a requirement um, the conditions are typically items that are are uh, slightly differ from what's in the applicants materials so right. within the applicants materials there's there's a discussion about a deed covenant in that area, as I recall it. Um, so mm -hmm. that that is that's a, that's just a it's a requirement that staff doesn't believe needs to be made as part of a condition. Okay. Okay. A quick question on that: <coughs> okay. Is the deed just that one page? Their entire deed to this property <coughs> just exists on that one page? Or no, that, the, um, the that page? was just a reference to the plan, the subdivision plan. So that's um, okay. So it's one page long. No, the, their deed is deed is longer than that. What I was referencing here was just trying to call out what it is specifically that we're trying to amend, and it's this condition as shown on I'll zoom out. Right. This is the subdivision plan signed by this board in 1987 um, that has that DEP condition on there. So what this note was intended to demonstrate was that um, the applicant needs to work with DEP to provide um, our department that the restrictive deed covenants as depicted on this plan, not how they're recorded. I haven't actually seen where they're recorded yet, and that's haven't that's done that deed okay. research because it hasn't seemed necessary. That's this point, we'll wait. It's the DEP's covenants, not the town's. I guess my question would be is, I, I understand you're capturing mm -hmm. a reference. I, I don't know, know if it's best to just remove the, the book and page number. I don't know if that would be, because if you go to the Registry of Deeds, you get a book and a page number. I, just, I don't know if it's, what I'm saying is I don't know if it's necessary to list that book and page number. I thought I just, the, the restrictive deed covenants as depicted on the plans recorded at the Registry of Deeds have been legally extinguished. No, I don't like the way that provide evidence to the planning department that any restrictive deed covenants as depicted on the plans have been legally extinguished. you what the problem we've identified be eliminated. The wording here sounds prior to the start of construction the applicant shall provide evidence to the planning board that any res any restrictive deed covenants as depicted on the plans recorded that the registry of deeds have been legally extinguished. Well I don't think you have to get rid of all of the restrictive covenants, just the one that's causing the construction issue, correct? I think the, the language is very sweeping in that statement. Okay. So, I would, I would rather see it. Lie, you know, what is it exactly? It, that's, I mean, 
what's the light verbiage there that we're trying to get rid of? It reads. You see what I'm saying? Where? The yeah. way this is this reads right now. Yep. Sounds like and this is the only this is the only restrictive covenant it's identified only, huh? on this plan page. I can zoom out. Okay. We can zoom around it if you'd like. Um, there's a couple of notes over here. So there's no other restrictive covenant language in there on this page. On that the, page. That's correct. Page okay. six. It says. Okay. I'm good. Sorry. No problem. We're all set. Just want to clarify. Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, I would just like to ask the applicant to confirm that the wooded buffer conservation easement and, and covenants has been completed and submitted. We had reference to it that it would be in accordance with the DEP standards, and that's referenced, I believe, in the application materials or the erosion and sediment control plan. I, I can't remember off the top of my head where it is, but we did reference it. Uh, specific it recorded has it been restriction? Recorded? Not yet, no. Has and it been applied for? It's not an application that we would need to apply for as far as placing the covenant on the plan. Um, we would be happy if that would, if the board would be uh, wanting to have a, that be a condition of the approval that that covenant be recorded. We would do that. So, so basically, if I can, oh. if I can <coughs> sort of provide some from input as to where I'm coming from. Um, my, I work in conservation on a daily basis, and the stormwater rules that um, will apply to the um, site plan amendment. Um, by using a wooded buffer, which is the best treatment. So thank you very much for doing that and preserving it. But what this, what this potential uh, conservation easement would do would make sure that that stormwater treatment is there in perpetuity, meaning that that stand of trees is, that's providing stormwater protection and, pre and prevention for this property will stay there. And, and there is... Um, methodology provided in Chapter 500 to go forth and, and, and put that covenants onto the deed as well. And it is a separate item. So, and if it's something that we haven't addressed before, um, I, maybe we... I don't, I don't know how to put it in there. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yep. Any further comments? Well, it seems to me, it, if I may, sure. it, you've read the motion. And you've read the conditions. It seems to me that uh, Robin has an amendment to the motion. Okay. Correct. Thank well, that you. that's uh, is. Are you proposing that? I am proposing that. Amendment? that yeah. That okay, that wasn't clear. Are no, you? I apologize. Okay. I, I needed a little help here. I'm going to okay. planning board boot camp tomorrow that's night. All right, Roger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Fine. <laughs> No problem. So I do, uh, you know, it, to to comply with Chapter 500. If DEP hasn't re required them to submit it as part of the site plan amendment process, I would request that the applicant uh, pursue that okay. thoroughly to protect the the wooded buffer, you got to preserve. Okay. okay. Thank you. <coughs> yes. If you, I've been trying to draft up some language. I mm. think. If you would be so inclined. Sure. Um, I'll make sort of two two comments. I think um, where staff had drafted uh, comments and, and conditions based on sort of everything that was in our staff comments before the board's discussion, um, uh, the chair read uh, number 3B to talk about the elimination of the two parking spaces. However, I heard as part of the discussion right. that board was generally okay with keeping those. So right. I might suggest that we modify 3B, eliminate what was previously read into the record, and replace that with provide a copy of the recorded conservation easement for the wooded buffer to the planning department. Yeah. Essentially, that would require that to happen prior to start of construction, which needs to happen anyway. So I think that covers the basics mm -hmm. that we've been talking Thank you, about. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second the uh, amendment. Well, the, so the amendment should be made by a board member, but I appreciate it, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second Thanks. the amendment. I will put that in my back pocket for now. Um, just just uh, as a point of order and for the record, um, I propose that we amend this motion to strike the previously read 
provision B for modifying the park lay parking layout and that we replace that with the new item B which would be that the applicant provide a copy of the recorded conservation easement for, <laughs> for, the, wooded buffer. for the wooded buffer to the planning department. I second the, the amended motion. Well, he seconded the motion. I, I, I think Ron has bids on that. <laughs> All right. So we have a we have an, a seconded amended motion. Is there any further discussion? All, right. All in favor. In favor of the amendment, correct? Yeah. All in favor of the amended motion. Yes. Now you're going to vote on the motion. We just approved the amendment. That's all we just did. All right. We've approved the amendment. All in favor of the motion. As amended. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Item number seven, Larry Scarborough, Inc. requests site plan amendment review for 14 Washington Avenue, Assessor's Map, R62, Lot 15. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a... Uh, interesting uh, how these two lined up on the agenda because they're very similar. Um, the applicant is before the board to expand a parking field and a previously developed site within the industrial district at 14, Wash uh, yep, 14 Washington Avenue. Um, the proposed development pattern is consistent with the industrial district, um, however it does require the board approval for a site plan uh, uh, through the site plan review ordinance provisions. We'll note that this site, though subject to shoreland overlay, now the proposed development is actually occurring within the shoreland overlay district. So that's one major difference here. Um, I think given the site characteristics and uh, the materials submitted by the applicant, staff really had very few comments. Um, we did address, again, as we talked about before, uh, light fixtures. Uh, and I know the applicant, I believe, is prepared to talk about that with the with the board um, and demonstrate what's out there. Um, the, um, Water and Kern will also provided the board with staff comments, principally concerning um, the principal concern that was raised was has to do with the location of snow storage and be sure that snow is not pushed into the stormwater facilities on site. Outside of that, uh, staff was generally comfortable with the proposal and has prepared a motion for the board is so inclined. That I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay, and I'll turn it over to the applicant. My name is Norm Chamberlain with Walsh Engineering. Uh, we represent Alaire <coughs> Scarborough, the applicant. Uh, they are the tenant in this building. Um, it's a pretty simple site plan. We have an existing 13,000 square foot uh, building that they are renovating to provide uh, uh, office space, laboratories, and research, research and development. Um, most of what we're here for is um, they, the second phase of their development is to fit out this rear part of the building. And with that, they're going to be going from about 15 to 20 employees up to about 50. So we had to add parking. Um, we're providing much more parking that we need, but um, it was the way the site was configured. Um, also, what we're doing is we're raising the parking lot right now. There's about a 18-inch um, uh, elevation difference between the ground outside and the and the uh, building, and we're picking that up to help uh, with frost action. Uh, this is a very flat area with uh, uh, high ground water, and so adding 12 to 18 inches of gravel should help some of that. Plus, it allows us to. Uh, manage our stormwater a little more effectively. Um, we're doing that with a uh, underdrain grass soil filter right here. Um, it uh, allows water to filter down through it and it will discharge into the uh, roadside ditch. Um, it also provides some detention and we've provided a stormwater report that shows that in most cases it does reduce uh, peak rates of runoff below existing uh, for, for all except the 25 year storm where there's a very small increase. Um, as Jay said, we're outside the uh, 250 foot uh, shoreland zone which is uh, back here. Um, 
As far as uh, snow storage goes, we're proposing to put that in the parking lot there so it's outside of the stormwater management areas. Um, lighting, we submitted a lighting plan with our uh, application. Um, it included some uh, revised, so some wall packs uh, that um, were not submitted, but uh, we submitted them this morning and uh, they uh, they were the ones that were used in the lighting plan and effectively the lighting plan shows that there's uh, little or no spillover onto adjacent properties. There is a little bit of uh, light in the street but it's uh, it's fairly negligible. So I think we these are all new LEDs so it's all you know uh, nice energy efficient everything's pointing down. I think it'll uh, be good for the area. Um, our plan does not require to meet uh, main DEP stormwater requirements, but we designed it to that. It also, uh, we are over-treating what we are creating. So the, the original plan, I think, was created sometime in the 80s. Um, we're treating about 150% of the uh, new impervious that we're creating. So we're, we're kind of over-treating, but we, we did have room to do that. So that's about all I have. I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, with this item, as with the last one, we have the opportunity for public comment. If anyone has anything to say on this, looks like no. So, <coughs> how about you, Ron? Uh, you covered most of it, but in the staff comments, uh, our town engineer was mentioned, and I'm wondering if she's comfortable with everything. Um. Yeah, I think uh, Walsh Engineering did a great job meeting with us early and coming in with stormwater. Um, we talked about it and what we could provide. I think they did a good job saying this is kind of what fits into the site and actually treating more than really what we were really looking at getting as much as we can out of it. And I think they maximized it for this site. So Thank I was you. very happy with that. You did mention, I'm going to address this to Jay, that you're going to have more parking spaces than you actually need. Correct. How many more? Um, we need about 50 or 60, and we have 74. It was kind of the layout of the site, and we're also thinking ahead. There, there may be some additional phases to this project uh, at some point in the future, but they're not part of this application. Okay. Um, I'm not hearing any outcry. I, I'm, I'm fine because I, I always, I come from the standpoint that I'd rather have them now than come back later, so I'm okay with that. And you mentioned the snow storage out of the stormwater area, and uh, in the reports that I have, I don't see anything else, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ron. Nick? Yeah, um, very complete application, which is nice. Um, you have a request in here, my, uh, it's my only comment, you have a uh, request for a traffic study waiver in here. And uh, I am satisfied with the waiver request. Thank you. Yes. So you need the industrial park to see how many more cars are going. That's what I have. Thanks, Nick. Mike? Yeah, that was my comment, too, uh, <clears throat> the request you have for waivers. So that, was, that would, I, I would think, be a part of any, any mm -hmm. uh, motions that we would consider tonight. Uh, can you can you give me a little background as to uh, why you believe that? Uh, first of all, how many additional employees is this going to result in? Currently, there's 15 to 20. I don't know how many was there with the previous use, um, but with uh, this development, there'll be about 50. Um, so I, I did an analysis in my report. Uh, unfortunately, it's over there. <laughs> But my recollection is that um, you know we talked about the peak uh, peak trips would be well under uh, DOT's 100 personal car equivalents, so uh, we didn't feel that there was going to be a need for a traffic study based on that. Uh, plus, they have staggered hours; they employees arrive anywhere from seven to eight, eight thirty. So, um, you know, it's not like everyone's showing up to punch a clock at, at seven o'clock. But there's uh, there's only one shift. There's only one shift. Um, it's, it's research and development, so you know, people get tied up with what they're doing and don't leave at five o'clock. Okay. Um, I guess I guess I would. Uh, I don't have a lot of reason to say uh, to object to your waiver, but uh, 
I'm kind of on the fence about it also because I'd, I'd prefer to have some kind of synopsis about the original traffic study or the original analysis so I could kind of interpolate as to what this might. I'm not sure there ever was one. Okay. I guess that would have to right. come from Jay if there was a, the original application. That was the mid 80s, wasn't it? <coughs> Something like that. I didn't come across anything in the file. Um, you know, this, the whole industrial park was a, a subdivision that the town worked on, or, or um, the um, so it's really been uh, the properties within the industrial park in this area aren't subject to our traffic impact fees, and that would really be ostensibly what we'd be looking at in, okay. in this regard. If this were a new site, I think it would be maybe a different conversation, but whereas we have an existing site um, and the impact fees are waived, um, staff was pretty comfortable with what their proposal was. Okay. So at the end of the day, you're, you're only adding 10,000 more square feet of impervious service? Um, about uh, 15,000. About 15,000. Now, uh, with a with your pen or or finger, uh, all of that gray area is actually going to be reconstructed. That's correct. There's there's nothing out here, um, and the existing parking lot only goes to about there. Okay. And so, so that'll be all brand new, out. and then more correct. Of the south. Okay. All right. No further questions. Um, thank you for the complete package, and appreciate the uh, the presentation. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Roger. Um, thanks. Um, I, I don't really have a problem with the um, traffic impact analysis the way we're on that either um, and the explanation that Jay gave us for that. And I think it's a very complete package and I, nothing really stands out to me that uh, any red flags or anything like that, so I, I don't have any further questions. Thanks. Robin? Yeah, I just commend um, Walsh Engineering for doing a great job. I think this package was really great and um, encourage you to, if, if developing again, reach out to the staff like, like you did before. I know that's Always. really what it's all about. So. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Um, likewise, I commend the applicant for, for uh, providing a complete application and engaging with staff and also thank staff for working with the applicant on that as they, as they always do. So, um, and I don't think I have anything else to add. I think any questions I had have been addressed by my colleagues. Uh, so with that, I will move to approve the application of the Larry Scarborough, Inc. for proposed site plan amendments to 14 Washington Avenue with the following condition and waiver. Condition is that prior to the start of construction, the plan shall be revised to address staff comments related to snow storage. The waiver is that due to existing development and proposed activity within the industrial park, the board waives the requirement for a traffic impact analysis. Revised plans are to be reviewed and approved by planning staff. Second. Second. Let him second. A second. And do we have any discussion on this one? No? I don't get to amend anything? <laughs> <laughs> now that we have the process now. Uh, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you and good Thank luck. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, Jason and Wendy Glode, Sotero and Alicia Giftos request a subdivision amendment of the Foster Farm Subdivision Plan, Assessor's Map R47, Lots 7 and 701. Jay? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see. Board members will recall this item from a few months ago. It's before you as a sketch plan. Um, just start with a little background of the site. Um, the original subdivision for Foster Farm uh, was created in 1999 or was approved in 1999. Uh, the Giftos property was identified as lot one of that subdivision and the Glau property was an exempt homestead lot of uh, three and a half, a uh, little over three and a half acres. In 2004, there was the first amended plan of the Foster Farm subdivision which actually wound up splitting the Glau property. Um, and thereby creating lots 19 and 20. Um, at the time of the original subdivision, the, sub, uh, the property, all the properties 
were in the r f district the property is now in the v r two district the v r two district states that for lots that are in a subdivision that was approved prior to two thousand and five which all these lots are the space and bulk standards of the r two district shall apply if the lots are served by sewer and that's sort of the critical component here board members will recall we have foster farm two which was recently approved within the last year and a half or so by this board just up broad turn road which is where the um, uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity folks are building their subdivision and they brought a sewer line up Broad Turn Road which has um, which left stubs for um, I believe it's four stubs that have been left um, for this so the applicants are looking to take advantage of that proposal um, so as staff noted one of the things that will be important um, that occurs is to ensure that these lots, these currently conforming lots, because they are currently on subsurface or on-site disposal systems, um, septic systems, they need to meet the RF standards or be at least 80,000 square feet. So prior to any land conveyance, which would make them smaller than 80,000 square feet, the existing house lots need to be connected to sewers. Um, so that's just a point uh, that needs to be made clearly. Um, Let's see, when we saw this sketch plan, uh, other items that the board discussed <coughs> were in regards to site access, I think particularly regarding uh, the new lot on the Giftos land, the board was interested in ensuring that uh, access was limited to Saratoga Lane, which the plan uh, depicts. Um, addressing um, stormwater issues, the Giftos property, as I mentioned, was part of the original 99 subdivision approval, which had a storm overall stormwater permit. The applicant has reached out to the DEP in terms of amending that permit. The response they received from the DEP is, we'll take it sort of as when you're ready to develop that property. The DEP is going to review their grading and drainage plan and uh, provide an amended um, permit at that time. Um, and staff has <coughs> provided some language as a draft condition that the board might want to consider if you're comfortable moving forward tonight. The Gloud property wasn't subject to that DEP stormwater permit. Um, staff, in, in the materials, there didn't seem to be much in the way of any stormwater considerations. Um, had co co conversation with staff, the town engineer, regarding um, ensuring that, that the, those issues are looked at. Um, and so we've um, drafted a condition that uh, consideration to its uh, grading and drainage plan be reviewed and approved prior to the issuance of a building permit for that lot. Um, again, that's an item that the board might want to consider. Um, staff notes that we had a few other sort of um, uh, 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 administrative type notes. Uh, I know the applicant had responded to me earlier in the day, and I believe he has addressed these to staff's uh, satisfaction. I'll leave it to him to sort of address those for the board. Um, but with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn over to the applicant's representative. I'm Matthew Eck from Sebago Technics, here representing uh, um, Mr. Giftos and Mr. Glaude, who are also here this evening if the board has any direct questions for them. Um, just uh, a couple of questions or a couple of comments after uh, Jay's uh, presentation. The existing homes on Lot 1 and on uh, Lot 21, um, or Lot 20, sorry, um, have already been connected to the sewer lines. Um, so I was informed of that. So um, I had suggested a note on here that they be connected prior to any building permits being issued, uh, but they already have been connected uh, to the sewer, and the sewer stubs have already been created for both of these proposed lots. Um, the access, uh, as you mentioned, we have, um, as the board requested, we've limited the access uh, on lot uh, 22 right here um, on Saratoga Lane so that any vehicles parked, uh, not parked, but uh, at the stop sign at Saratoga Lane waiting to turn on to Broad Turn um, wouldn't be restricting someone from turning into their driveway. Uh, and we don't expect very many vehicles, um, certainly three or four vehicles would fit there um, without blocking a driveway in this area. Um, it also limits that there be no, um, no driveway on Broad Turn here. 
uh, as we discussed before with the board, we would have a driveway on broad turn um, for this lot as there's no other road frontage available. Um, and we have uh, looked at the, the grading um, on this lot, not having a house to design yet. Um, uh, we've heard the board's concerns with that and, <coughs> and we are acceptable to having a condition of approval be that they uh, would require a grading design prior to or at the building permit process. So uh, I think uh, that's addressed most of the uh, comments that the that were addressed. Um, we have added some information to the plan just to clarify, um, labeling the the buffer limits that were on this side of the of the subdivision, as well as labeling and adding a note regarding the buffer limits on the other side. Um, this, they were existing prior to, and will be maintained as such. And we had um, uh, a calculation uh, error on the uh, net residential calculations, which has been corrected. Um, it's, it, uh, we had shown that it was allowing seven lots um, in this area. It's only allowing six, but we're only having four total anyway. So it was just a, a lot size uh, being the net residential allows uh, 20,000 square foot or half an acre, and I'd use the 20,000 square feet rather than the 21,000 and change for the half an acre. So if you have any questions for us, we're here this evening to answer those. Thank you. Um, once again, uh, this is another item on which we have opportunity for public comment. So if anyone would like to come on up, this is your chance. Looks like we do have someone. Uh, yes, hello. My name is uh, Henry Catadors. I'm the abutter to the uh, Gallet, uh, property, uh, which is, uh, I think, property 20. Uh, would you mind uh, giving your street address, just for the record? 61 Broad Turn Road, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. And um, um, basically, uh, I don't have any concern with it being a building lot or anything like that. Um, the only concern I have is drainage uh, for that lot. Uh, and I just heard some discussion going on um, about uh, a site plan would have to have uh, good drainage uh, for that lot, which makes me a little bit happier. But uh, uh, the reason I'm here is to point out that um, um, we've owned that uh, property since uh, uh, 1990. Uh, actually, my wife was there before I was. Uh, and um, when they put in the development, um, uh, lot number 19, um, when that uh, specifically was built, the house was built, uh, they cleared the field that was there, and uh, basically we had a, uh, a huge water problem uh, such that it um, eroded uh, underneath our driveway all the way up to the garage. And <coughs> excuse me. We had to replace the, uh, the driveway, and we had to put in a lot of fill and actually put a ditch there all the way out to the road ditch to divert the water uh, that was coming in um, to the tune of about $15,000. Um, and my concern is, uh, again, drainage, uh, lot number uh, 19, which is uh, budding our property, um, that's a very low area. Um, and uh, I would think uh, um, that would have to be built up to put a house on it. And I see a similar situation going on there as what uh, happened. Uh, you know, in, in 2005, when uh, when the uh, other property was developed, so I I don't know what um, uh, you know I don't know exactly what I can do to to um, you know comment on it or anything else like that. I'm just here to gain some knowledge and sure. and find out what uh, uh, my options are. Uh, so I can avoid th this from happening again, that's all. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, would I have to wait to the, the property is sold and then um, a site plan is, is, is uh, discussed as to how they're going to, you know, where they're going to put the house and what they're going to do to the, pro uh, the actual property as far as the uh, grading goes and whatnot before I would comment or... What? Yeah, I, mean, I think we'll have some discussion here at this stage about about drainage, okay. um, drainage 
planning, uh, but but yes, typically, I mean, this is the subdivision approval sure. stage, yep. so we're not quite into I'm probably premature. Right. But I, I, I based well, on the expense not, I went through, I, sure. I, I want to make sure. I definitely get it. not premature to raise it okay. as a as an issue, and 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 through the board, we'll we'll be sure to 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 address that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I do want to also note that we we got an email. Uh, Dated February 19th from Bruce McIntyre, who's also in a butter at one Saratoga Lane, uh, who similarly expressed some concerns about drainage, and that's uh, everyone on the, the board has that through staff. All right, um, moving on to board discussion. Mike, would you like to start us off on this? Uh, sure. Um, our last conversation. Uh, we talked about, th I guess, through the chair to Jay. Last conversation we had, I think there was something about uh, the uh, lot 20, mm -hmm. the uh, Glod property, as far as uh, any kind of loose ends, um, compliance issues, et cetera. Has that been rectified? The Jay can elaborate on it. My understanding uh, is that those issues have been uh, addressed or that the code enforcement uh, and staff visited the property and, and determined that there were no uh, violations. Okay. Um, well, it looks like everything's been addressed for the most part. From, I guess all things that I recall on our first conversation. Um, pleased to see that you uh, have highlighted where the driveway access to the proposed lot 22 would go, and I and I see that 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 is represented by 91.59. That is the distance there, anywhere within there. Yes, and they're showing the two leaders to to designate it on the plan as well. Okay. And the note that goes with it. Um, and I see the easement. They've already hooked up to sewer, so. Yes. Is there any other, uh, is there any kind of, I guess that, that easement allows for crossing, will, will allow for crossing over with the driveway, of course? Yes, yes, that certainly, is, they would still own the property. It's an easement for utility purposes. Um, as far as the drain, I, I recall this issue uh, with, uh, forgive me if I mispronounce your last name, Caradoris, and um, in lot 19 as far as it relates to uh, the, um, for lack of a better term, the unauthorized clearing of this area. Is, is What, if any, uh, measures can you take to ensure that this no-cut buffer line is well demarcated? For the uh, the new owner for lot 21, the property corners are proposed to be um, set. Anything that is missing, uh, the 50 foot buffer can easily be measured from those as it is on the rest of the subdivision. I'm I'm afraid, you know, I appreciate that, but I'm afraid that it, it potentially might not be enough because I think that's what uh, we had for lot 19. So I'm wondering if there might be something a little bit more. Um, more prevalent, more of an announcement, um, such as maybe some sort of uh, temporary type of um, fencing of some sort to make sure that construction doesn't impact that area. Um, it, it would be odd to have fencing required to protect a buffer. Um, I haven't seen that anywhere else. I, don't th I think you misunderstood me. I'm talking about maybe temporary fencing, such as something like that orange plastic fencing during construction. Oh, during construction? Time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly don't see a problem with, with putting that restriction on. Um, my client isn't proposing to develop it himself. It would be a future buyer. Sure. sure. Um, but we could certainly put that restriction on there that they would be required to. Because it's not, it's not really clear. <clears throat> I mean, there's not like a, um, a natural um, uh, line of some sort, whether it be trees or otherwise. It's just really, it's really hard to, it's indistinguishable from the rest of the lot for the most part. Yeah. This area, this no cut buffer area. Yeah. So well, that would be part of you know what I assume the board uh, may want is the grading plan. Um, it would be laying out the building, uh, showing where the proposed grading and everything is going, and certainly we wouldn't be proposing any grading within that buffer area. Right. Of course. Uh, so at that point, um, we you know we or another surveyor could lay out stakes along that so they could put a fence up. Okay. Uh, but it would be reasonably easy to measure uh, from the property corners as well, being 50 feet. So. Right. So whoever did it, if it's a contractor laying it out, they could certainly still abide with the, a board condition to 
put up some temporary barrier. Um, the uh, the abutter spoke about uh, um, having an opportunity uh, via reviewing or seeing a site plan analysis or what, for lack of a better description, when Lot 21 is built, and that's not really going to be the case. I mean, we're here to approve this amended subdivision, and then from there, uh, that lot would be sold and construction can begin once they have uh, permitting in place. So um, I don't know if, um, if there's any way that the, the grading plan can be shared uh, not just with this body, of course, and the planning department, but also with the abutters. As as a condition of approval, if you know, as as what what I believe that um, Jay was looking for is that the town engineer uh, would need to review it as part of the building permit process. Uh, I'm not sure if that if at that point they would share it with the abutters. I mean, it is all public knowledge once right. any building permit right. is submitted. So maybe not so much for the applicant, but maybe for our um, for our purposes, for the planning department, if uh, we could maybe make a note to um, go out of our way to contact the abutter and let them know that that has been submitted and it's available for the review. Would that be uh, unyielding? I worry about the nuance of. Mm -hmm of that being picked up. We don't typically note, when building permits are submitted, we don't notify abutters of that. Um, so I really think it, it maybe goes back a little bit to the discussion. It, it's sort of incumbent on the board. One of the conditions is that subdivision sub, you know, has no adverse impact on abutting properties. Sure. Sure. So I guess the question to the board would be, are there materials yet submitted that give you that confidence, or are you comfortable with the condition that that type of issue would be picked up as part of um, a building permit process through our town engineer, as at least it's drafted as a condition right mm -hmm. now? Um, you know, we can always try to do our best, but I, you know, I think right. that's a bit of a nuanced condition that. I, yeah, I would you agree. Would you know, I, I think it's just important that we have the conversation so you know exactly that uh, one, one has to pay attention and uh, stay involved. And uh, if you have an opportunity <coughs> to comment, um, then uh, feel free to do so. I'm, I don't mean to have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with you, but just that uh, just stay involved. Because the, these, these documents will be submitted. Uh, presumably, uh, we may approve them tonight as a part of the condition, and the planning department will ensure that they meet our, our codes, which is, like Jay says, uh, it, it can't impact any, uh, any abutting properties. So, so uh, I don't have anything more to say. I'm glad to hear that, the, um, that uh, Lot 20 has been cleared up, and, um, and that, uh, did you say both lots have been hooked up already, or? Yes. Both have. Both existing homes, yes. Okay. Good. Oh. And the, the proposed lots have been stubbed. Okay, excellent. And uh, the driveway for Lot 21 will obviously be on Broad Turn, but uh, for Lot 22 it will be on Saratoga. Correct. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all. Thank you. And thank you for the point of clarification or correction on the, the nature of the subdivision approval. Hmm. We have so few residential subdivisions approved these days that we're hmm. maybe a little rusty. Nick? I don't think I have anything to add to this. Okay. Ron? Yeah. Uh, clarify for me. On lot 20, the existing lot, are there two buildings or one right now? Uh, it's, there's a, a barn and a house. Okay. That, 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 it was the barn. Okay. Now, my second question, lot 22, how close is that? And I, I, I see some of the two, the Bowser's property, which is the, the, budding property <laughs> where the white oh. space is that's the that's the Bowser property yes is this this property is the Bowser property yeah about 22 about that okay and is, is there any buffer between those two properties no no uh, the um, there's a portion of the property you can see the the dash line here that property was conveyed to the Bowser property from the original subdivision. Okay, but again, the the where it says north thirty four point four five and the and the Bowser 
property. Is there any buffer there, or is that all, all open space? I'm not familiar with it. There's no proposed buffer, as, as in the no-cut wooded buffers that are elsewhere in, in different parts of the subdivision. Maybe to, you have to go to the microphone and introduce yourself, please. Hello, I'm Sotero Giftis. I'm the owner of 2 Saratoga Lane. Uh, and currently, there is a row of, I guess I call them pine trees, um, completely from the street, from the broad turn side all the way down around the side of this property line. There's an L-shaped row of trees all the way from broad turn uh -huh. here. Okay. <clears throat> I guess uh, my concern would be the concern of uh, what we heard in the letter that we received, and that is the uh, running off as the construction takes place. And that's what I'm driving at, that there would be no disturbance of the existing homes that are there while the construction takes place. Go ahead. This lot uh, would be subject to the DEP approval and would need the grading plan and um, whatever DEP standards need to be met, whether that be a rain garden, et cetera. Um, so that would be addressed in the DEP approval of that individual lot once, once an individual house plan is chosen. So it's premature to grade the lot not knowing what house is going to be built on it. Okay. Um, have you been down there? Yeah. <laughs> um, just during the sewer construction, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, that's just, I mean, I'm, it, it's just way out of my league, but I'm just concerned in visualizing it mm -hmm. uh, that uh, these existing structures, and if, we're, if what I heard was true, that originally was done, there was already one big problem with drainage. Uh, what's to convince me there's not going to be another one now with the construction that's, that's going to take place? I, I know that corner is, is, is open because that's where the sewer stubs went in. Um, and then I guess I'm not sure. I, I do remember the row of trees that you're referring to, but I'm not quite sure about the grade of the land, and that's more what you're referring to yeah. is how the runoff goes. And I can't really speak to that. I mean, it's been a little bit since it's been out there to, to really look at how that would have drained, um, but it it sounds like what they're proposing they would need to come forth with a grading and drainage plan for DEP, so it would it would have to be addressed. Okay, okay, well, that makes me feel better, and I want that in the conditions. Okay, thank you, thank you. Also, no? yeah, thank, thank you. you. That clarifies it for me. Roger, thank you. Um, <coughs> Actually, I think Mike answered a lot of the, or he dealt with a lot of the questions. As I recall, the first time there were these miscellaneous issues with your property, I think, and and then there was a concern about where the driveway was going to be on Lot 21, and um, and um, and it seems to me everything's been is pretty much in order. Um, I do have a question on the no-cut buffer, I guess. Is that just a strand of trees, or is it, what is that? Do you know? The uh, no-cut buffer this, um, this stretch of does allow for removal of dead or, design or dying trees, um, and you can replant trees in that area, but you can't go cut any living tree. You can't mow the area. Uh, it's meant to be a natural vegetative state. Okay. Uh, but if there, you are allowed to plant trees. Okay. in that area. Okay. All right. Um, I, I guess I don't really have any, I mean, it seems like everything's been answered for the most part. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Roger. Robin? Yeah. Um, first, I agree with my colleague of, of the idea of putting a construction fence in to, to specifically, demark, you know, delineate where that no-cut buffer is. I think that would be extremely helpful. Um, and second, can you give us just a rough idea which way the, the surface water will flow off the, the, the sites here? Uh, Since we don't have an existing condition plan type the, thing. The surface water in general right now is flowing, you can see the direction of the arrow. Okay. It's flowing generally that direction. 
Um, lot 19 uh, is flowing basically back, um, so they had some some wet area back here, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't survey off onto that property at all. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where this area is flowing. I, I haven't done the topographic survey work for the for any drainage plan yet. Okay. Um, so the need to keep that no cut buffer is obvious, you yes. know, with the storm water going directly to that 50 foot. Yes, but any re any regrading or berms or anything required or ditching would be outside of that 50 Perfect. foot buffer on the lot itself. Perfect. Um, do you, or or perhaps this is for Mr. Giftos as well, is there an established or an anticipated proposed timeline for the development of any of these properties, or is it just being developed for at some point in the future? I believe Mr. Glods is, sorry, is just developed. up for sale okay. at some point in time. Okay. I'm not sure if Mr. Giftos has a exact plan or not. The current plan is to um, is to bring my mother and stepfather in. Um, I don't have an exact time just yet. Okay. Thank you. Um, my next question would be for staff, maybe Jay, if this neighborhood, um, if there's an opportunity for stormwater master planning at all in this, in this, you know, as if this subdivision keeps keeps going, kind of a thing. Would, is this an appropriate place to do some? Sort of neighborhood stormwater planning, or no? I'll look to my <laughs> stormwater expert, who I typically look to at these times, and see what Angela has to say. Mm. Um, well, I guess coming forward with this application, it was the first I've heard of really the drainage issues out there. Mm -hmm. And if there, it sounds like isolated to some low points that I'm not sure if they were not graded correctly from the mm. original approval plans or not. I, that's something we can kind of look into. Uh, however, the houses are there now. Yeah. So all we could do is really making sure that it does not get worse and it doesn't direct more runoff that direction. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much, um, how many more lots, I guess, along this stretch, I think is what you're getting to yeah. now gets divided because now there's sewer. And um, if there's other drainage issues along that stretch. I know there is a pretty deep drainage ditch that runs along Broad Turn Road um, that conveys quite a bit of flow. And we had um, some work we did with some erosion um, in fixing that. Um, so I think it's in, it's in pretty good shape. So if we could get water directed to it, I think we're good. Um, I'm not quite sure as far as going above and beyond that, that might be necessary at this point. Yeah. That's good enough for me. I'm, I'm, I'm fine, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape here. I uh, thank the applicant for the responsiveness um, over the last couple of months uh, in tying up some of these loose ends and working with staff on various things. Um, to pick up on a comment by, by uh, Angela, our, our town engineer, I think it is an important point to make um, periodically on, in situations like these that um, we don't look to sort of the next applicant through the door to solve all the pre-existing problems. So while it may be regrettable that certain abutters in certain situations might have existing water issues, um, as Angela put it, well, um, what, we're looking to, what we're looking to accomplish with any subsequent development that's proposed is that we not make it worse. And that we certainly take any opportunity that might be there to, to try to improve it if we can, but it's not something that we can really require. Um, that said, um, it's something that clearly now is, is there on the radar um, with the engineering department, and um, I think I uh, have confidence in entrusting that uh, grade, grading and drainage uh, design and approval process um, to the applicant in conjunction with with uh, DP and, and town staff. Um, I also agree with the suggestion um, that we include a condition uh, in our approval here for providing construction fencing, delineating the, uh, the no-cut buffer area during construction. Um, beyond that, I think everything has been pretty well addressed, and um, I think I'm prepared to put forward a motion. Uh, so I approve. I move to approve the application of Jason and Wendy Gloud and Sotero and Alicia Giftos 
for proposed subdivision amendments to the Foster Farm subdivision with the following conditions. Number one, prior to issuing a building, a building permit for Lot 22, the following must occur. A, the existing home on Lot 1 shall be connected to the public sewer. <coughs> B, copy of the amended DEP permit shall be submitted to the Planning Department. C, a traffic impact fee in the amount of $3,299 shall be paid. And D, a recreation contribution fee in the amount of $500 shall be paid. Condition number two, prior to the issuance of a building permit for Lot 21, the following must occur. A, the existing home on Lot 20 shall be connected to the public sewer. B, a grading and drainage plan for the site must be submitted to and approved by the town engineer. C, a plan note reflecting condition 2B is to be added to the plan sheet. D, a traffic impact fee in the amount of $3,299 shall be paid. E, a recreation contribution fee in the amount of $500 shall be paid. And F, prior to construction, construction fencing shall be laid out to clearly delineate the no-cut buffer area. That's the motion. Should that be on both or just one? You've attached it to uh, Lot 21. Should it be also attached to Lot 22? The, the traffic impact fee? No, the no, fencing. <coughs> no, just 21. Okay. <coughs> okay, thanks. Impact. That's fine. We have a second? Uh, second. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? I appreciate uh, putting in the construction fencing, uh, but um, it should be clear that, of course, this is only required during the grading, construction, manipulation, if you will, of the lot and the building and then it would be taken down. During the it's construction not, period. Yeah, it's not meant to be. All right. It doesn't need to be said, I, I would imagine. But um, that was my intent. Of course. Yeah, sure, I think, yours, sure. Yeah. I, think, I think that's what we were trying to accomplish, but we can make that more clear by adding the word temporary. Okay. Okay. So we have well, a... I, I, I would like to make an amendment to your motion, Mr. Chairman, that the word temporary be inserted into 2F to, um, to more clarify the intent of the construction. Okay. Second. There's a second. Any discussion of the amendment? All in favor of the amendment? The amendment is approved. Back to the main motion. I would now put forward the main motion as amended. Uh, my understanding from the email earlier, the traffic impact fee was to be split between the two lots. And I think the way it was read in the motion, it was to be paid on each lot in full. Uh, it was my intent to split the number, and I believe I did that unless I, let me. Yep. Yep. Let me, make sure we have the numbers right here. Uh, you are correct, I, yep. Sorry. Well, that's what happens when a planner tries to do math. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 16, 48. Actually, the number, when I look at, let's see, what you guys just come up with? 164950. Because I might have just messed those numbers up <coughs> completely. So let me just do this. So the, 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 the two impact fees, one is for Dunstan Corner, two trips, um, each trip at 1402, which is a total amount of $2,804. Haggis Parkway has one trip assigned to it. Total amount of that trip is $990. When I add those totals divided by two, it should be $1,897 per each slot. That's a good pickup. My, my apologies for however I messed that up. Right. So the original amount was 37.94. The original number? I think. <coughs> yeah, he's 37.94. 2,804 plus $990, 3,794. Yeah. Okay. The number was wrong all the other time. Time permit. Nice catch. Good catch. Propose an additional amendment to reflect the corrected amounts as 1897 per lot. 
Is the 500 for both each, two? Is that, that's for each of them, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, we have a second for that amendment. All in favor of that amendment? All right. I'd like to put forward the original motion with the two amendments, which have just been approved. I'll second. We have a second on the original amended motion. All in favor of the amended motion? Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Put you through your paces at Robert yeah. Rules tonight, buddy. Yeah. Dave would be proud. Robert Rules and, <laughs> and Division. And, uh, that was good. Good, James. All right. Oh, I am. And you're complete. But if you need that, you can go ahead. I'm sitting in the right spot. Just for the record, I consider myself a planner, too. So. Between her and All right. We have a town planner's report. Um, yeah, the one thing I just want to make mention to the board, and I believe we sent you an email, and I might have mentioned our last meeting, we are going to conduct a workshop prior to our, our next meeting on March 14th. It's going to be uh, to begin a discussion around the town's uh, um, desire to get stormwater capacity. So we will be issuing stormwater permits and um, having more local control over that process. So we won't have to concern ourselves so much with going to DEP and um, so. But that's we're going to have that workshop, as I said, prior to our next meeting at 6 p.m. We are inviting folks from the Conservation Commission and some other committees as well. So um, it's really the beginning of a discussion of an effort that's been ongoing for some time, um, and we want to start to staff wants to start to have a more broad discussion with folks as we start to consider this. So at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. and we will send out an email. It'll be part of on our agenda. So. All right. Thanks, Jay. That's what I have. Sorry. Mr. Chair, can I can I add? Yes. I'm not uh -oh. town planner, but can I add? <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, two days later on the 16th, we'll be having a council workshop, which planning board members will be invited to. We'll be talking about um, our MS4 requirements that we need to do annually. So it's always good to brush up on what Robin's talking about earlier, on what we are required as staff to do and what the town what that means to the town. So we'll be educating council and planning board members are also going to be We'll get notices on all this, yep. right? Okay. Will that be did you say is that six o'clock as well? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> an hour before council as well. Right. March. Right. March sixteenth. Great, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Administrative amendment report have one item to report on. We, working with the board chair, uh, approved some minor modifications at Camp Ketcha for a, uh, an arts building. Basically, it's just sort of a shell of a building that during the, they'll use during the summer months for their um, uh, <coughs> campers to do arts and crafts. Um, and there were some other smaller adjustments. They have a, a, a storage container out there right now. They keep hay in. They're going to do a, a nice little open shed type area to store the hay, so a um, few modifications like that at that site, but that was approved, and that is all I have to report. Thank you. Any correspondence beyond what was already noted this evening? Yes. Thank you, Ron. Um, it's right here. I'll pass it over. Uh, we did receive a letter from Scarborough Free Baptist Church dated February 5th, 2016, um, in relation to the proposed none such brewery uh, and just if I may paraphrase uh, sort of wanting to set the record straight about any potential discussions of utilizing their parking lot for any overflow or valet parking and they're stating that that has not been discussed and um, the church council had recently voted against uh, any such provision so we will keep that in mind uh, as that process goes forward thank you Anything else? All right. Any yeah. planning board comments? Yeah, I'd like to follow up on that because that was the first question that I asked. Was that, and I was told straight out on the record that they had discussed valet parking with the church, and according to the letter, no such discussion was ever had. And I, I have a problem with that. Last for me. All right. And I do want to have uh, one other thing. Uh, we have another transportation committee meeting tomorrow night, so I will, we'll report back. 
to that at our next meeting. Thanks, Ron. Any other comments? Um, I'd just like to say that it is, it's been stated before, but it's uh, nice to have town engineer available for some of these meetings oh, and, and to have a, a new board member with the sort of expertise on conservation and stormwater that, that Robin has. So those are definitely assets, particularly with, given the nature of a lot of the projects that we see, a lot of conservation subdivisions and things of that nature. So that's great. Absolutely. And um, with that, I will move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you.